In the last video, we started with hydrogen bromide and pent-1-ene, and we reasoned through a reaction mechanism. We'd say, we said, all right, bromine is much more electronegative than hydrogen. There's a partial negative charge. But maybe it takes, maybe it takes hydrogen's electron altogether. So if we drew the valence electron that the valence electrons that bromine already had, so it would already have seven valence electrons. And this is the seventh right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And let me draw that seventh one. I'll do that seventh one in orange as well. But maybe hydrogen's electron I'll draw in this yellow color. Maybe that bond is yellow right there. Now, bromine would hog that electron. So we could literally show it as just taking that electron. And after it's taken, taken that electron, we drew one possible path where the bromine now has eight valence electrons. It has a negative charge. This yellow one is the one it took from hydrogen. Hydrogen now has a positive charge. And in the next step, hydrogen took an electron from this right carbon, the carbon that was in the carbon-carbon double bond. It decided to take it from this right Right carbon. This one of the pi bond between the two carbons was broken. Now that was, I won't call it an arbitrary decision. We'll see that that's actually the more likely thing to happen. But it could have, it would have been possible, maybe, for it to take an electron from the left carbon. So let's see what we would have ended up with if that happened. So let me draw, let me draw my pent one ane again. So we have a hydrogen bonded to a carbon to a hydrogen. We have our double bond. Bonded to a hydrogen, and then a CH2, CH2, CH3. And then we have our bromine. We have our bromine. So let me draw that right here. So we have our, draw it right, right over here. And let me draw its eight. Valence electrons. I'll keep one in yellow just so we remember that that actually originally came from the hydrogen. It would stripped off its electron and it has a negative charge. It has a negative charge. And then we have the hydrogen, which is really just a proton now. It has a positive charge. It has no electrons. Now, instead of this guy giving up his electron, as we saw in the last video, let's make this guy give up its, his electron. So this pi bond right here, this bond right there, the, this, the left carbon will lose its electron, and it will, go, it will go to the hydrogen. So we're doing kind of the opposite of what happened right there. Now if we go down that path, what is it going to look like? If we go down that path, we'll show them in parallel here. So if we go down that path, we, have, we now have our bromine hanging out here. Let me copy and paste that. Copy and paste. So we have our bromine hanging out here. And now what does this molecule look like? It is no longer pent-1-ane. It now has bonded with this hydrogen. So let me draw it out. So we have, let me scroll down a little bit. We have our a hydrogen, a carbon, a hydrogen, a single bond now to this carbon. We have one bond to a hydrogen. The bond to the rest of that business over here, CH2, CH2, CH3. Now this carbon is now bonded to that hydrogen. I'll do it in blue. So this carbon is now bonded to this hydrogen. This hydrogen is now neutral because it has an electron. You could view it as it took it away from this carbon. This carbon now only has three valence electrons, or you could view it as only it has five total electrons now. It'll have two in its lower shell. So it now has a positive charge. It has more protons than electrons. So this carbon right now has a positive charge. Notice when we did in the last one, the carbon on the right had the positive charge. Now the carbon on the left has the positive charge. And now in this circumstance, in this circumstance, the bromide ion will want to give an electron or form a bond with this carbon. So let's draw that. So bromine, we could just pick an arbitrary electron here will form a bond to that carbon. And we're going to end up with something slightly different than this. It will look like this. So we have our, we have our, maybe should I, let me redraw the whole thing. So we have a carbon bonded to a hydrogen. Let me make it a little bit cleaner. Bonded to a hydrogen, bonded to another hydrogen, bonded to a carbon, which is bonded to a hydrogen. And then all of this, 
all of that right there. This carbon on the right is bonded to the hydrogen. Its bond was blue, just to remember allow us to remember where things came from. And now this guy, we could imagine forming a green bond. The color is more to just to show us what happened. A green bond with the bromide. So it forms a green bond with the, brom with the bromine. It's no longer an ion now. It gave, you could view it as it, have, having, it has given away an electron to this carbon. So now everyone is neutral again. Now in this. When we did the first mechanism, this thing that we got, this was 2-bromopentane, where the bromo group is on the, or the bromyl group, is on the second carbon when you number from the left. Now we have 1-bromopentane. So this is a different molecule. And both of them seemed like reasonable mechanisms. Now, if you were to do this experimentally, if you were to take hydrogen bromide and add it to your pent-1-ene, like we saw, you'll actually find out that 95% of the product, that 95% of what you produce will be the 2-bromo, that the 2-bromo, or maybe I don't want to get specific with the numbers, the, the great majority, the great majority the great majority, that 95% number, actually was not for pent-1-ene. That was actually for uh, that was actually for a hex-1-ene. So I don't want to state that number. But the great majority of your product is going to be the 2-bromopentane, and the minority of your product is going to be the 1-bromopentane. So this is the minority. So the first mechanism we showed is actually the one that is more likely to happen. So the question is, why was it more likely to happen? And I'll show you a rule called Markovnikov's rule that tells you that at least allows you to figure out which one is more likely. And then we can think a little bit about why Markov, Mark, Markovnikov's rule holds. So Markovnikov's rule, let me write it down. Markovnikov, Markovnikov, Markov. Nikov's rule is that the the carbon that already has more hydrogens bonded to it is more likely to bond to another hydrogen. So that's what happened in this left case. The carbon on the left already has it has two hydrogens bonded to it. The carbon on the right only has one hydrogen bonded to it. So Markovnikov's rule says, and he observed this experimentally in the mid 1800s. He said, okay, the one that has more hydrogens wants more hydrogens than it already has. So this, it would tell us that this circumstance is more likely than that, that this carbon is more likely to bond to this hydrogen over here, as we saw in our first mechanism, than the right carbon bonding to the hydrogen. And that's because this left carbon already was bonded to two hydrogens. This right carbon was only bonded to one hydrogen. So this one right here is more, more likely. And an easy way to remember it is, is that the one that's already bonded to more hydrogens wants more hydrogens, and that eventually the one that's bonded to more functional groups, so things other than hydrogen, is more likely to want to be bonded to other functional groups or other things that aren't hydrogen. So if you were to just look at this reaction here, and you said, OK, the hydrogen is going to bond to one of these, these carbons. The bromine is going to bond to the other. You'd say, well, look, this carbon already has more hydrogens bonded to it. So it is more likely to get the hydrogen. And this this carbon has more functional groups. It actually has one functional group attached to it right there. So it is more likely to attach to the bromine. And we see that there. That's the, this is the product that if you experimentally were to do it, you would have a majority of. Now, the one thing to think about why that happens, the reason why it happens is that this, so in either situation, we end up with a positive carbon. And this is called a carbon cation. Let me draw it. So this right here, that carbon right there is a carbocation, the one that lost, the one that lost its electron. That is a carbo carbocation. In this example, it was a carbon on the left that lost its electron. That is also that is also a carbon cation. Now, depending on how many carbons a or or really you could view it as uh, on how many electron giving atoms a carbocation is bonded to, that determines how stable it is. 
So this one on the left right here, it is bonded to two carbons. And carbons are more likely to kind of help out. You're like, oh, you lost an electron. I got a lot of electrons. Let me help you out. Let me share the pain with you. It is more stable when you're bonded to more electron giving electron giving atoms. And in this case, you would call this a secondary carbocation. So this one right here is a secondary. This is a secondary carbocation because it is bonded to two. It is bonded to two carbons. This one right here is a primary. It is a primary carbocation because it is only bonded to one carbon. Now, what's actually happening here, the reason why, why Markovnikov's rule holds, he didn't know why it worked. He just observed it. But the reason why this is more likely to happen than this on the right is because a secondary carbocation is more stable, as, is at a lower energy level than a primary carbocation. And that's because it has more friends, more carbon friends, that are willing to let it lend it some electrons. A primary carbocation, it was already hogging electrons from hydrogens. Hydrogen does not have any more electrons to lend or to let, uh, let kind of flow in that direction. And so he's not going to be as stable. This guy is. And that's the reason why Markovnikov's rule holds. Secondary carbocation is more stable than a primary. And if this was between a secondary and a and a a tertiary carbocation, one that actually has three carbons attached to it, the tertiary one would be more stable. So the more carbons you're attached to, or the more uh, electron-giving atoms you're attached to, the more likely, uh, the, the more stable you will be than other people at giving away your electron.